Hello everyone, my name is Holden Hardvin. Thank you so much for joining us again for another video. I'm very excited that we're finally getting to watch The Iron Giant. This has been one that has been requested for several years now. And uh, this is the perfect opportunity for us to check it out. We're doing quite a few individual movies that aren't a part of a larger series. The Iron Giant came out in 1999. It is an animated movie, which we don't do a whole lot of animated movies. I know that you're kind of up in the air with animation in general, kind of softened up to it when we did Clone Wars and Rebels. And even still, those were CG cartoons, whereas this is like a traditional 2D animation. We have dozens upon dozens of comments throughout the years requesting us to watch this one. I have seen this one several times and I'm so excited to show it to you, Jen. Uh, what do you know about it and how are you feeling going into it? This is one of those movies where I've heard about it, but I don't know what it's about, except for I know it's Joey Tribbiani's favorite movie. Oh, oh, is it really? Uh, one of his favorite movies. That's, he loves Iron Giant. That's funny. So with animation, yeah, two years ago, I was very much like, animation, I'm good. However, there are kids movies that like, I had in my childhood that just have a special place in my heart. I love The Little Mermaid, love James and the Giant Peach. So there are like kids movies that I would still watch today. Either way, I'm curious to see what this is all about. Holden raves about it. I see that it's a BAFTA Children's Award winner. I don't even know what that means, but that has to mean there's some good qualities. So uh, hopefully it's gonna be good. Even though it's animated, I do have a prediction that you will like this movie. We'll see. I, I've been wrong before and I, I don't usually make predictions anymore, but uh, I think it being animated, strike against it for you. But, but regardless of that, I think that you will like it. We'll see though, I could, be, I could be totally wrong. And before we get into it though, we can't forget the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day comes from two years ago from Luis Castellanos, who says, I am hyped for one day, the Iron Giant. Well, that day is today. Super stoked to check this one out. Also, slight deviation here. I wanted to make sure we watch the Iron Giant at, ver at the very least before we watch Ready Player One. And if you've seen Ready Player One, you'll know why. Let's go ahead and get into it then. The Iron Giant. Well, you have to give her one because you gave Boston one. Well, she didn't see me give Boston but one. But I know that you gave her one. And actually you gave Boston two, so. You gave her another one? Well, I dropped it for her trying to be sneaky, but it went under the thing. Boston can't even get it. Grab it for her, please. Boston, this is why I don't do things for you. <laughs> Hold it! You gotta give one to Falcon now. <laughs> She's ruining this couch, keeps licking it. When did this come out? 1999. I think Brad Bird directed this, who directed um, The Incredibles, I wanna say. I could be I could be way off. Never saw that fact, either. Fact check me on that one. I'm not I sure. never saw any of the, like. The Incredibles? Oh, we gotta Like as opposed to, you know, the old school Disney movies. Did you ever watch Lilo and Stitch? No. Oh, that's a good one too. Mahalo. I saw Moana. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Moana's good. Moana is good. Station to Hannibal. The lighthouse! I, I see it! Oh. Wait, why is there a robot in the water? All we know is that he came from space and crashed. Is this movie gonna make me cry? Probably. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, maybe not. It's got that old school, like, uh, old Disney type of look to it. Not Disney, but. Over here, honey. Was that Jennifer Aniston? I think so. Oh, and we've been through this before. No pets. Oh, yeah. Not a pet, mom. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Huh? <sighs> <clears throat> Came from outer space. I saw it. Crazy old Maurice. 
An invader from Mars? That, that's, that's what it is. It's an invader. I love Beauty and the Beast. A, a, a spaceship, <laughs> an unidentified flying object. Unidentified. Is this why you like this movie? What? Because they have a UFO? No, but you know, hey. it's a nice, happy coincidence, though. Is my son bothering you, sir? Yes. <laughs> uh, no. Found your pet. Where? It's up my leg, man. Squirrels in my pants, Hogarth. Ew. <laughs> Squirrels in my pants, Hogarth. I'd like to apologize to everyone in advance for this. <laughs> <laughs> Did not see that coming. Check, please. <laughs> this isn't Fox. Right? 15% of their brain matter. gonna get it. Stupid antenna. 50s were a different time, man. Yeah. Did you ever have an antenna TV? Yeah. We used to put tin foil around the. Did you do that? I too? don't know if it actually worked. I don't though. know either, but I tried watching PBS. PBS Kids. I just watched Deep Space Nine. Oh, I love Deep Space Nine. What kind of gun is that? Is that a BB gun or like a 22? Uh-oh. <gasps> oh, is he like a transformer type thing? Uh, I guess, actually, yeah. Oh my gosh, what's he? Wait, what? Can I get a bite to eat? Oh no. Oh, it's funny that Joey Tribbiani I just realized, would say this is his favorite movie, given that Jennifer Aniston does the voice Yeah, in it. oh my gosh. Honey? Oh. Oh, golly, there's a big off switch. <laughs> this would be like scary for a kid, I feel oh, like. Oh yeah, big time. Boston's getting scared right now. She really is. Uh-oh. What do you think you're doing? Don't you know better than to water off at night alone? Something ate our TV <laughs> antenna. It's a Hogar. robot! We're really hit it! And please, and the- Oh, there's Falcon. In a town very much like your own, without warning. <laughs> <laughs> Been sent by foreign enemies to take over the country. Oh my gosh. Bite out of it. That's why I'm selling it. It's got a large bite out of it. <laughs> I really did call the government. Yeah. Who in the hell would the government send? Kent Mansley, United States government, unexplained phenomenon department. Marv <laughs> What happened? Unexplained phenomenon department. What do you think? Escape gorilla? Uh, what department is that again? People want to know that their government has a response. I am that response. The biggest thing in this town is probably the homecoming queen. Oh my god! <laughs> come on, Mark. Come on. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Come on. Come on. Pick it up. Something big. Come and get it! <laughs> so I'm assuming that he's a nice like transformer type thing. Oh, you'll see. Oof. <laughs> Shut off, Switch. You saw me save you. Don't you remember anything? Maybe it's that bump on your head. Do you talk? Well, like that? You do that? A lot of people compared this to Bumblebee, actually. Or rather, Bumblebee to this. Rock. Good. Yes. No, no. Tree. That's right. My own giant robot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This is no meteor, gentlemen. I'll come back tomorrow. No, no, 
me go, you stay. I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> My mom will work out. <laughs> That's right. Wait a minute, what do you think you're doing? Put it back! Put it back right now! Oh, good, good! Now the other. That's fine! Leave it alone! <laughs> oh. oh no. Oof. <laughs> the man looks messed up. A human report saying a train accident? What do you mean he hit a giant creature? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> you can fix yourself? Oh, He's in there all alone. What happened here? Giant metal man. Would you say grace, please? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Put in front of us and stop! The, uh, the devil! <laughs> Get out of here, Satan. That was. Hmm. Stop, stop, stop. Oh! Hey there, Scout. Oh. Uh -oh. Dick Mansley. I work for the government. <laughs> Your parents home? We're eating. Mm, boy. Who's there, honey? Do <laughs> you have a telephone I could use? Yes, there's one in the kitchen. But, sir, I, I've got an eyewitness. An eyewitness with a concussion. Get me a photograph of this thing, and I could probably get some troops over there. But you tell me you've got a feeling. <laughs> Hogarth? <laughs> an embarrassing name. Hog Hog Hogarth News! <laughs> the power station. Hogarth was out there the other night. Red Rider BB gun. And the other night he couldn't stop talking. I mean, hundred foot robots and whatnot. It's <laughs> nutty. <laughs> uh, what else did he say? <laughs> Are you all right? It's so important to really chew your food. <laughs> A little privacy? Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> the spirit, very cool. Blizzard. The spirit, wow. Superman. He only uses his powers for good, never for evil. The Tomo, the metal menace. He's not the hero, he's the villain. He's not like you, like Superman. 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 <sighs> okay, now, march! <laughs> <laughs> you can't go there yet. People just aren't ready for you. We gotta hide! You know, hide! Just get behind! <laughs> Quick! Don't move! <laughs> 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 By a knight known as Hogarth. Not my style of reporter guy to the authorities. <laughs> this is espresso. It's like coffeezilla. I said I'm hip. Hip. I just do the stupid homework. If everyone else just did the stupid homework, they could move up from grading a pound or two. Is there any more coffee? <laughs> you are who you choose to be. Now choose. It's okay. Oh my God. Uh oh. It's okay. He <laughs> he can't say a lot of words yet, but he understands things pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got plenty of room here. I can't hide it here. Him. 
You are up already? Just making the bed. <laughs> well, that's nice, but come downstairs. It's literally our life. <laughs> Morning, sport. Sleep well? Mom? Okay, that's concerning. Uh, he's renting the room? I don't think he's just renting the room. <laughs> what do you think he's doing, sweetie? He might be renting her. Wow. <laughs> It's morning now. <laughs> Might be renting her. <laughs> hey, hey, stop! Stop that! Now, why would you tell your mom about a giant robot, Slugger? How big is this thing, Ranger? Been in the forest lately, Scout? Hey, where you going, Ranger? Slugger? What do you call this again? Landslide. Very new. Mmm. Landslide. Oh! Well, this kid is getting the last say, I'll tell you that. You think this metal man is fun, but who built it? The Russians? The Chinese? Martians? Canadians? I don't care! Canadians? Just hold that thought and stay right there! <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Welcome to downtown Coolsville. Ah, oh, come with us. It'll be fun. <laughs> Just stop leaving his stuff everywhere right? with his name on it. Big baby! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like floods the town. <laughs> Bambi's mom. Well, I guess he decided to... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's the mom. Oh no! They killed the deer! Oh. Hold it! Oh dear. Oh no! This is supposed to be a kids movie. What is wrong with these people? Uh oh. Hey, what's Ultron? <laughs> Guns kill. Guns. Oh, I don't like that. I know. I'm sorry. They killed the deer. It's bad to kill, but it's not bad to die. <laughs> Die. Someday. I die. And souls don't die. Souls. This movie is dealing with some deep themes here. Mm -hmm. Death, you know, the inevitability of it, the certainty of it, the morality of mm -hmm. it. That's what I was thinking. The soul. Souls don't die. You're late for <gasps> dinner, Hogarth. Oh. oh, geez, creepy. Your mom's working late tonight, Hogarth. So it's just us guys. Oof. You've been careless. Pretty incriminating, Hogarth. Where's the giant? It's all right, Hogarth. Ask for your attorney. You'll be taken away from her, Hogarth. You can't do that. Oh, we can. He's in the junkyard. I'm copping the scrap. Hogarth, you rat. This is only a bad dream. Ah! Ah! Different times. What is wrong with this guy? I'm not exactly a carpenter. <laughs> like that one. was terrible. I know. <laughs> My wife, 15 minutes after she says she wants to watch a movie. <laughs> Morning, Kent. Okay. Oh, no. All right, where is it? What? The metal man. Ah. He's in the back. Come on, I'll, I'll show you. Sir, uh, listen, sir, listen, step outside, Mansley. Yes. 
that I was beginning to uh, <laughs> think it was real. <laughs> I'll expect you back in Washington to clear out your office. Yes, sir. You can move now. <laughs> nice job. A Tomo. No, a Tomo. I Superman. Okay, Super. Superman. He is Ultron. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> Oh, jeez. What happened? What happened? Shh. Get back. Oh. No, stop. He's a weapon. A big gun that that walks. I got gun. Yeah? I not gun. You almost did that to Hogarth. I mean, he's right. He almost killed him. It was defensive. You're not gonna get there fast enough on foot. Oh no. It's big. It's walking away. Hey, give me those. Over there. <laughs> Watch it. Jeez. Mm. He's got a kid. Oh my gosh. Only reacts defensively. If you don't shoot, this is all your fault, beatnik. The giant's got the kid with him. He says the monster's killed a kid. Sir, we must stop it at all costs. No. We have a situation, sir. Oh. Oh my gosh. Realistically, I'm not sure Hogarth would survive all this. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's cool. We've hit it with everything we've got. Not everything, general. The bomb. We can lure it away from the town, then destroy it. Locked and loaded. Oh, my baby, I'm so sorry. Stop the car. Hogarth, out of the car! We have to evacuate what the are area! What you talking about? Hogarth, no! Hey, no! Ooh, they lucked out. Hogarth, remember? You don't have to be a gun. Hogarth. Aww. We gotta show them you're good. <sighs> I don't know, he left a pretty... Pretty bad impression. <laughs> yeah. Attacking him is triggering a defense mechanism. Don't listen, General! Don't shoot! Hogarth! Hold your fire! The boy's alive! It's a trick! This is not worth standing by. Watch the missile now! <gasps> oh my gosh! Targeted to the giant's current position! Where's the giant, Mansley? Uh, we can duck and cover. We're all going to, to die for our country. Screw our country! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Screw our country, I wanna live! Oh. Everyone will die. Giant? You stay, I go. No following. I love you. Oh, 
sucks. You are who you choose to be. Superman. Oh no. Well, that wasn't a happy ending. Let's go home. The amount of paperwork you'd have to do. Oh. Oh, that's sweet. Best work yet, honey. No doubt about it. The general sent this to you. Said it was the only part recovered. I miss him. See you later. What? <laughs> oh. oh, that's cute. All right, just finished watching The Iron Giant. This is a, a very cute movie, not too long. It's only about an hour and 25 minutes or so, but definitely a lot of heart. It also dealt with some very serious themes, themes like death and the finality of death. And then of course you have it ending with a happy ending. I'm kind of torn, I don't know. I feel like maybe the Iron Giant should have actually died and sacrificed himself. But on the other hand, everyone likes a happy ending and it's nice to see the final little screw going back to try and put them all back together again in the end. And of course we get the confirmation that he did in fact survive. But uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on this movie considering that it's so different from what we usually watch. It's animated and uh, well, how did you like it? Yeah, it was a cute movie. Um, I especially just like the relationship between the Iron Giant and Hogarth. I thought it was very tender. And you know, it was interesting that Hogarth was as mature as he was. And just the fact that he could really teach the Iron Giant the wisdom that he had. The Iron Giant surviving at first glance, I'm like, oh, that's cute. That makes sense. It's like a kid's movie, but I think actually thinking about it, I also wish that maybe the Iron Giant would have actually not made it. One of the things that I thought was interesting in this movie was that Hogarth was very blunt about things die. You know, everything essentially comes to an end. They talk about your soul living on, but everybody dies. And uh, I appreciate that, you know? I appreciate not everything is all rainbows and puppies. You know, there is some reality to things and the fact that they kind of infused a child's uh, film with that fact, I think is fabulous. Is it kind of ruined by Iron Giant surviving uh, when it was clearly a situation where I think it was appropriate that he didn't make it? That's debatable. I, I I would have preferred him just not making it. I think that's just uh, in a certain sense, that's just reality. But that doesn't make me dislike the movie. I really just enjoyed the Iron Giant altogether. Uh, he heavily, heavily reminded me of both Bumblebee and Ultron at the same time, which I think is so funny and odd, but it really did. I was not expecting the Ultron aspect of it. I really thought that uh, like once it was a couple minutes in, I was like, oh, okay, so it's like a Bumblebee type situation. Um, and then seeing like the red eyes, I was like, what am I watching? Like he pulls out these like massive weapons. Thoroughly surprised by that. All in all, it ended up being a really good movie. Also just a little thrown off by a couple of things. Like I, this is a kid's movie and it's a really cute kid's movie. I think that it's like um, a good movie for kids to see. But the agent, super weird. Um, the fact that like he moved in, I understand that like his angle was to get information, but like renting a room and then there was the scene where he put the kid unconscious <laughs> with yeah. like, what the heck is going on? What am I watching? Super weird. I, that was, I was very surprised by that. I'm shocked that that actually was in the film, 
but it was fun. It was all in good fun. Um, I really think that it was like overall just a cute movie. It's just really special to have any type of movie that focuses on a relationship between a child and really anything because we all know as kids, you, you you feel like whether they're reality or not, you have these special relationships. You know, it's right up the alley of E.T. So I love that type of stuff. Um, very, very tender, very sweet. Like it really pulled on your heartstrings, especially like the scenes where like the Iron Giant was like crying over the deer, like relatable relatable 100%. I loved how sweet they made the Iron Giant. It just hit all the spots and um, I really, really enjoyed it. So in like 1999, we're kind of getting to the end of cartoons that respect their audience, the audience of children. Uh, Mr. Rogers talked about this a little bit, but there were several cartoons at the time Shows like Batman the Animated Series, which deal with some more serious tones, and you've actually seen the Batman Animated Series, at least some of it. Mm -hmm. The Iron Giant, where he's still very much a child, but he's he's talking like how how would a child explain what death is? You know, it's it's not perfect, but in some ways it's still profound the way a child would explain to some to a creature that doesn't know or comprehend what death is. What would that child say? And I appreciate that a lot. Mr. Rogers talked about how there were a lot of programs for kids where it's just people throwing pies in the face and just to keep the kids' attention, they're all stupid kids. But this is a movie that respects the audience. His programs, one of the reasons they were so profound is that he respected the children that he's communicating with. He acknowledges that they're children, but he can also deal with more serious issues, issues like uh, divorce, issues like, um, uh, a national tragedy he talked to kids about. Feelings of just being like intensely angry. And a lot of kids programming does really shies away from all that. It's just keep the kids entertained, shut them up, you know? And so that's one of the, what's one of the reasons I really like uh, Mr. Rogers, one of the reasons I really like this movie, where a child can watch it. It's not preachy. I mean, even in, even in the way that they talked about death, it's not preachy, it's just a kid ex trying to explain what death is. Um, anyway, so I love that aspect. The movie is super entertaining. I love Hogarth. I feel like every little boy kind of experience some of what Hogarth experienced. I don't know about how y'all grew up, but like I would constantly like be leaving the house, probably way too young at my age to be doing that. Just as he is like sneaking out at night and it's really not a big deal to, to the mom. He's going to like some scrap yard, hanging out with some guy, you know, different times. I had a BB gun, I took the BB gun out and uh, probably wouldn't fly nowadays. But there's a lot of relatability in that in that aspect, I think. And of course I love the Iron Giant and the message, you know, you, you are who you choose to be. You know, it's like, I, I am not a, I'm not a gun, I'm not a, a weapon of violence, you know, I choose to be peaceful. Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, that's why this is fitting, he tells this story about how when he first uh, auditioned for the role of Optimus Prime, and he talked to one of his buddies who was like a Marine or somebody, and he's like, how should I portray the voice of Optimus Prime? And the Marine guy said, be strong enough to be gentle. And uh, I love that as, a, a, you know, as we're in a culture of toxic masculinity and manhood and all this stuff, being strong enough to be gentle. And so when Peter Cullen went in to do the voice of Optimus Prime, he jokes, he was like, at first he's like, I am Optimus Prime. He's like, no, that's not it. I am Optimus Prime. It's like, this is a powerful but gentle masculine figure. And the Iron Giant is very similar in that way. He's very, very strong. He's powerful but he's gentle. And I really like that aspect of, of manhood, man. This is turning into something else, but I, I know it's going into Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime, giant robot. Um, but I love that. So there's a lot here that just is wonderful philosophy, wonderful points of view, and uh, just, you know what? Just a solid, great story at the end of the day as well. What would you rate this one? I think the term you were looking for was gentle giant. Gentle giant, oh perfect, yeah. Absolutely fits the Iron Giant for most of the movie. I think that this is a movie that I would want, again, most of the movie, I would want my child to watch. And still made it entertaining for both kids and adults. All in all, I think it was a, it was a pretty simple storyline too, which obviously makes sense because it's a kid's film, but also like infuse some complicated topics. So all together, they just did a really great job. They made the Iron Giant so lovable. Him in particular, I just fell in love with. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna rate this an eight. 
Last thing, I also really appreciate that as far as the information the audience is given about the Iron Giant is the same as the characters in the movie. For instance, they never explain where the Iron, Gi Iron Giant comes from. They don't explain why he can turn into this giant destructive machine. They don't explain why he's there. And uh, I, I think this is better for it. A lot of the times as audience members, we wanna know well, all, the answers to all those questions, but to put us with the characters in the movie uh, who don't know, I, I think is, I think really works. And I appreciate that they don't just spoon feed us that in this movie. For me, I think this movie is a solid, um, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. This is a pretty solid film. Of course, we'd love to know what you guys think. So leave us a comment down below, we'll check those out. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. It does help the channel out quite a bit. Subscribe, you'll be notified when we post the next video. And check out Patreon. You can watch videos like this without ads early until I publish them. You can also watch the full length reaction with Jen and I over there as well. But for now, that is it. Jen and I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.